Hey guys, welcome back to another video in my AP Biology or Biology Olympiad prep playlist. In the last video, we discussed dehydration synthesis reactions and hydrolysis. Today, we're going to be talking about carbohydrates. All right, let's get started. Carbohydrates consist of sugars and polymers of sugars. Monosaccharides are a type of carbohydrate. They are the simplest sugars. They only consist of one molecule as indicated by the mono in monosaccharides. These are the monomer units of carbohydrates. A couple of examples of monosaccharides would be um, glucose, fructose, and galactose. Now glucose, fructose, and galactose share the same chemical formula, C6H12O6. This makes them isomers. Now isomers are substances that have the same formula but they have different structures and that's what makes them different molecules. Next, we have disaccharides. Disaccharides are basically two monosaccharides bonded together. This happens through a dehydration synthesis reaction. An example of this would be sucrose, which is a fructose molecule bonded to a glucose molecule. Another example, maltose, which is in malt sugar, consists of one glucose molecule bonded to another glucose molecule. Now let's see what that would look like. Let's say I have a glucose molecule now, this is just a rough drawing. It's not the exact structure of a glucose molecule, but this is what it would look like. And I have another glucose molecule. The two hydroxyl groups on the bottom in the center form a water molecule that leaves and it leaves an extra oxygen behind that bonds them together. So what you end up with is, this is the first monosaccharide, the bond, the extra oxygen from the two hydroxyls, and the second monosaccharide. And this is a disaccharide because it consists of two monosaccharides. Now the bond between any two monosaccharides in a carbohydrate is called a glycosidic linkage. Lastly, we have polysaccharides. These are polymers. This means that they're basically made of many monosaccharides. Polysaccharides serve two purposes. They serve as storage material that can be hydrolyzed for energy and they also serve as building materials for cellular structures. An example of a storage polysaccharide in plants is called starch. Starch is stored in different parts of plants like roots, leaves, stems. This is so that it can be hydrolyzed and used as energy for cellular processes, like cellular respiration. An example of a storage polysaccharide in animals is glycogen. This is stored in our liver and muscle cells. Again, uh, it can be hydrolyzed to release sugar for energy when the organism needs it. Now let's look at structural polysaccharides. An example of this in plants would be cellulose. 
Cellulose is a major component in the cell walls of plant cells. An example of a structural polysaccharide in animals would be chitin. Chitin is present in the exoskeletons of a lot of bugs. It's what gives cockroaches their crunch, which is very disgusting to think about. It's also found in the cell walls of fungi. But let's go back to glycosidic linkages. Now, a glucose can bond in two different ways. It can form an alpha glycosidic linkage, and it can form a beta glycosidic linkage. This is what an alpha glucose looks like. It's the same thing I drew before. But in a beta glucose, this hydrogen hydroxyl thing over here is flipped. So this is what that would look like. The hydroxyl is on top and the hydrogen is on the bottom. And this causes these glucoses to bond differently. In an alpha glucose, it bonds like this right over here. It's the same thing I drew with maltose. This is how it would normally bond. But because the hydrogen and hydroxyl are flipped in a beta glucose, it bonds differently, like that weird little zigzag over there. An example of a molecule that forms alpha glycosidic linkages is starch. An example of a molecule that forms beta glycosidic linkages is cellulose. And that's all you need to know for this video. If this video helped, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below and I will do my best to answer them. As usual, I have linked a checklist of everything you need to know from this video for review and an image of these notes in the description box. And good luck studying. Bye!